Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining this afternoon. Uh, as I mentioned a few moments ago, that we'll be working with the hamstrings today. Uh, last time, I promised a uh, hammock for the head pose, but we didn't have a time, didn't have time to do it. So today, we'll actually start with this position, just to make sure that it's in our practice today. And like I said, the sides of the body, maybe some twists. Um, so hopefully it will be a well-rounded practice that you enjoy. Let's begin lying down on our backs. Uh, we will find a bolster or something that resembles a bolster. And let's place it underneath the knees. Also, if you have a strap nearby, uh, place it near your mat so you can reach for it in just a little while. Find your way onto your back and move your bolster or the cushion as close to the sitting bones as possible so you can connect the soles of your feet on the floor in front of the bolster and guide your knees wide apart. Supported Supta Baddha Konasana reclining bound angle pose. And of course, if this position does not work for your body today, you can extend your legs forward. Extend your arms over the head, find a deep inhalation, maybe a deepest one for the last few hours. And as you exhale, release your arms to the floor by your sides. If you haven't already, let your eyelids lower down. Begin to feel your presence in your practicing space. Whatever room you're in, notice the four walls. You don't necessarily need to open your eyes. Just feel the presence of the wall to the right, to the left, the wall in front of you, the wall behind you. If you're practicing outside, notice the larger space that unfolds around your body. Noticing the presence of the ground that is folding you, the presence of the ceiling or the sky. You are here, wherever here is. Begin to slow the breathing down, deepening the inhalations. Slowing down the exhalations, maybe for the next few breathing cycles, you exhale out through your mouth. And as you let the dust of the day to settle down, begin to connect with the body and how it feels today. Noticing your mind. If the mind is busy, notice that. If the mind is quiet, acknowledge that as well. Noticing your heart in its current state. Just how does it feel to be in your body, mind, and heart today, this moment? So I wanted to start with a story that you might be familiar with. Um, it happened um, some years ago, I think it was like uh, 50 years ago. There was this massive statue in Southeast Asia plaster and uh, plaster clay statue that people have had revealed for centuries. And it wasn't particularly a beautiful statue, but people loved it for its uh, staying power. It survived invading armies and different rulers and different weather systems and so on. But one particular long-extended uh, drought and cracks appeared. And when the monastics uh, one shined a light to see what the infrastructure of this massive statue was, what gleamed back was the shine of gold. And others looked in with flashlights and eventually uh, they took off the covering. 
And it turned out that the plastic clay was a covering uh, to reveal the largest, more solid, most solid gold statue of the Buddha in uh, Southeast Asia. And what's interesting, the monks feel like it had been covered as it turns out, this is uh, historically true, to protect it through difficult times. There was an invasion at one point where all the monastics were killed, but the statue survived. But they think it was uh, covered over uh, in a way that we cover over our golden nature to protect us through uh, difficult times. So as we develop as human beings through our childhood years, um, perhaps we were treated sometimes in ways that were harmful and even uh, wounding. Maybe in our cultures or societies, there was some um, unkindness. And so we cover ourselves over with our defenses and the strategies that uh, protect us. And so this covering, although might have served us while well at some point, in so many ways is causing us suffering. We begin to identify with that covering, with the defense mechanisms. And there are so many ways that this practice uh, offers us that we can notice our identification with um, some of those patterns. Resistance, avoidance, aversion, but also to rediscover our innate uh, beauty and um, treasure of the heart. And so today, as we move through the practice, I invite you to come back to already familiar to some of you practice of RAIN, recognize, allow, investigate, and nurture. So as we stay here in our backs for a few more moments, you might scan your body with your inner vision, noticing if there's area, if there are areas of tension, areas of uh, pressure, areas of tingling. Noticing if there are areas of the body that feel good or neutral. Noticing the way the body is being held by the ground. And as if you are watching a movie and you are moving through it and at some point freezing the frame right where you get most reactive, right when you get most um, reacting with aversion to the way the body feels, the way the mind thinks. Pause right there. So you can kind of tune into the space that you're in. And then right where you are at that point where you feel most reactive and you have kind of frozen the frame of your experience, we can begin rain by just recognizing whatever is the most predominant. Emotion or feeling. Whatever experience is the strongest right now as you hear these words. It might be confusion or fear. It might be some discomfort in the body. So right now, just mentally name that, note it. And after you do, intentionally allow it to be there. In some way, you're saying, yes, this is the reality of the moment. 
not resisting it. You don't have to like what you're seeing, what you're experiencing. You're just letting it be. Pause here for a few moments. Hover around that strong experience. Body, mind, heart. And then draw your attention to your hands and feet. Begin to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Guide your chin side to side, side to side. Welcome, welcome gentle movement to your body. If your knees were bent, if your feet were connected, extend your legs forward over the bolster, over the cushion. Stretch your arms over the head for another full body stretch. And then release your arms to the floor by your sides. Bend your knees more and slide your bolster to the side or forward just to clear out the territory of your mat. Extend your legs forward, find your strap or a belt or a scarf, whatever you have nearby. And if you do have a strap, the one that has a buckle, let's move the free end of the strap through both ends of the buckle one way, and only through one end of the buckle the other way around. So forming a loop with the strap. If you don't have a strap with a buckle, no worries. We can work around it. So let's extend the right leg towards the ceiling, fold the strap around your right foot. If you don't have a strap with a buckle, you can fold the strap around your hands once or twice, so your hands don't have to work as much. If you do have a strap with a buckle and it's formed in a, into a loop, then lift your head and place your head behind or place the strap behind the head. The strap can be on the level of the ears or by the tips, the tops of the ears. Play around with the position of the strap, finding its placement where your head can trust that support. And if your hands are not holding onto the strap, you can rest your arms on the floor by your sides. You can bring your hands to your belly. So wherever your hands are, Begin to move your legs side to side, side to side. And let this movement be quite generous. Let the movement be quite generous. So covering quite a bit of the territory with the movement of the right leg. Maybe close your eyes for these next few moments so we can get some feedback. What area of the right leg needs your attention the most? It might be your inner thigh, it might be your outer thigh, it might be the center of the leg. And for at least seven breaths, seven, maybe 10 breaths, pause on that angle, pause on that area. Allow your eyelids lower down. If you choose to keep your eyes open, let your gaze be relaxed. There's nothing in particular you're trying to see right now. Just let your gaze soften. And if you choose to close your eyes, let your eyelids be heavy. And let's all guide the inner vision to the body. There is a lot going on in the body right now. There are areas in the body where we feel a direct presence of this asana, direct imprint. The back of the leg, the inner or the outer thigh. But there are also areas of the body where you might notice some uh, resistance, some tension, some gripping. It's interesting how we create defenses and in the attempt to protect ourselves, uh, not only in the mind and the heart, but also in the body. So what you might notice here as you 
begin to feel this deep stretch at the right leg. You might notice that you're clenching your teeth or your shoulders are way up by your ears or you don't breathe as deeply or you hold the breath from time to time. So perhaps all of these are unconscious patterns of self-protection. I'm bracing myself against this challenge. Stay here for a couple more breaths. Let's say five more, maybe change the angle of the right leg. So if you are noticing these um, secondary um, areas of tension, resistance, gripping, holding, let's not try to change them right away. Recognize that there is some additional tension, clenching the teeth, frowning, holding the breath, and explore that experience. Noticing the paradox of our mindfulness practice, how whenever we let something be, we have a better chance of letting it go. So as you rest your mind on that process of clenching the teeth or frowning, you might discover almost immediately that this effort, this contraction softens. This area becomes more spacious. Great. Let's slowly, slowly find the strap. If you haven't already, find it with your hands. Pull onto the strap, lift the head, and set the strap aside. Lower your right leg down, extend your arms over the head. Finding another full body stretch, maybe a deep yawn, maybe engage your buttocks to highlight your hip flexors, the tops of the thighs, and then release your arms to the floor by your sides. Uh, let's take a moment here to uh, reconnect the soles of the feet, guide your knees wide apart, bring your hands onto your belly, close your eyes and guide your inner gaze to the space underneath your hands, feel your belly. And for the next couple of breaths before we switch sides, um, breathe in a way that encourages your belly to move. Inhale, let the belly round and expand. Exhale, let the belly deflate, the belly descends. Although the belly might be moving more than under normal circumstances, we are not trying to expand it as much as possible. We're just experimenting with bringing some movement to the belly so the diaphragm can move more freely, more efficiently. Let's find another slow belly breath. And then release your arms to the floor by your sides. Guide your knees together. Maybe give your knees a hug. Gently roll side to side. And we will switch sides. So return your right leg on the floor. By the way, you can keep your right leg extended or bent. And then fold the strap around your left foot. If you don't have a strap with a buckle, you can fold the hands around or a strap around the hands. And by the way, if you don't have any kind of strap-like prop, you can hold on to the back of the leg at the calf area, at the hamstrings area. If you do have a strap with a buckle, lift your head and place the strap behind your head. Finding the position of the arms that allows your shoulders to relax, allows, allows your neck, the upper chest to soften. And begin to move your legs side to side, side to side. Again, letting the movement uh, be generous, revealing the areas 
or area that needs your attention. Inner thigh, outer thigh, the center of the hamstrings. Some of you might right away discover that spot where the sensations are vivid. Some of you might need to move the leg around a few more times. Whenever you find that sweet spot where the sensations are vivid but not painful, pause there. So again, as if you were watching a movie and you decided to pause the movie and the image was frozen, pause at the current scene of the movie of your life. Right now, as you're hearing these words, what is the most predominant aspect of your experience? It might be the sensations at the back of the leg. It might be the breath. Your neighbors might be creating weird sounds. So that's what is your mind gravitating towards. It might be a feeling or emotion. Now ask the following question. What does this experience want? What does this experience need? How does this experience want to be treated? So if there is an aversion or resistance or anticipation, in your heart. How does this experience want to be treated? Does it want to be treated with more anticipation, with more resistance, with more aversion? Or maybe all this experience needs is your curiosity and kind attention. What does the sensation in your leg need right now? Maybe it needs a touch. So if your hands are free, maybe you place the hand at the back of the leg. Maybe you massage this area a little. Maybe again, this sensation needs your presence, your attention, your mindful exploration. For the next five breaths, feel free to switch the angle, the position of the leg. And again, besides the more obvious experiences in the body, notice where else and if there is some tension, gripping, contraction. The areas to watch for are the face, the neck, the shoulders, the belly. Pause in that secondary area of tension, secondary to the primary experience. Perhaps the moment you notice that you're clenching your teeth, you're not clenching them any longer. All right. So if your leg is not vertical to the floor bring your leg up if you're not holding onto the strap with your hands please do so and let's slowly slowly lower the left leg down set the strap aside oh find a full body stretch as you return the back of your head to the floor if it's not there already and once again bend your knees connect the soles of the feet guide your knees wide apart and rest your hands on your belly for a couple more of these belly breaths, allowing your eyelids lower down. Letting the belly expand as you inhale and enjoy that sense of relief as you breathe out. If 
find another slow, intentional belly breath. And then guide your knees together. Let's give the knees another hug, roll side to side, side to side. And maybe this time you bring your eyebrows to your knees, you lift your head. Release your feet down and roll over onto your right hand side. Find your way onto your right elbow. Let's extend the legs forward towards the short side of the mat. If possible, have your legs extended. If not, you're welcome to bend your knees. So a couple of options as far as the position of the right elbow here. The right elbow can be on the floor underneath the shoulder, or you can find a block or a cushion to place underneath this right elbow. So more elevation for the elbow will create more opportunity for lengthening on the right side of the torso. If your right hip bone is digging into the ground and it's very unpleasant, roll your mat a couple of times underneath it or find a blanket and uh, set it underneath the hip. Left hand can be on the floor in front of your pelvis or on your left thigh, or you can wrap your arm around your lower back. These two last options will be uh, inquiring more uh, balance. I like to place my hand in front of me. So let's first press the right elbow down wherever it is, on the floor or a block. And as you exhale, sink into your right shoulder. So letting the right side of the body uh, release towards the ground. Try this two more times. Inhale, press the elbow down, lift the chest, lengthen your spine, and as you exhale, sink back into it. Try it again, press down to lift up, and as you exhale, release into this position, following the gravitational pull to bring the right side of the body down. So your head can stay lifted, you can bring your head down over your right shoulder, Maybe move your chin a little side to side, side to side. This is not gonna be a very long hold, about a minute and a half. If your eyes are open right now, notice where your gaze is naturally landing. Noticing the objects you're seeing, the colors you're seeing, different shapes you're seeing right now. With interest, bringing about your natural curiosity, exploring the visual objects. Maybe for the next few moments, you close your eyes and with the same quality of curiosity, you begin to explore your inner world. Where do you feel most reactive right now? Where do you feel perhaps some discomfort or aversion or hurt? Take a moment to mentally name that. Restless, tired, sleepy. Again, intentionally allow it to be there. Saying yes, yes, this is the reality of the moment. This is the reality of the moment. Can I pause with it without having to do anything else? Bringing a kind interest or curiosity to that experience. Again, you might ask, what does this feeling or sensation need right now? 
can I offer it to this experience? Very slowly, press your right elbow and your left hand down to lift the right side body further away from the floor. If you haven't already, bend your knees, push your left hand down, set the block aside if you were using the block. Return oh, onto your right side. This time the ribs are lying down on the floor. And let your head be held by the pillow of your upper arm or an actual pillow. You can find one to support your head. Just take a moment here to recover from this side stretch. Oh, maybe taking a deep breath in and enjoying a sigh of relief. Oh. And with the next few breaths, bend your right elbow and bring your right head, uh, uh, well, we only have one head, um, your head over your right hand. Oh, the things you say in a yoga class. And then extend your left leg towards the long side of the mat. Move your right knee back, right knee back. And then begin to search for your right foot with your left hand. If the connection is not happening, you can find a strap, fold the strap around your right foot. And you probably know where we are going with this one. Let's find cattail twist position. Rotate your left shoulder out and slowly, carefully carry your head back and down to the floor or a block behind your right upper arm. So if holding onto the left, uh, onto the right foot or a strap does not feel comfortable, you can wrap your left arm around your lower back. You can extend your left arm out to the side on the floor or prop your arm with a bolster. If having your left leg extended is a bit too much to ask of the hip or knee, you can bend your left knee and prop your inner leg, your inner thigh, with a bolster or a blanket or a pillow. So we want to feel um, held. We want to feel held in this experience. Like we are given this unconditional support. Support in which we can release, to which we can melt. And once you find the position of the arms, legs, torso, head, where you can afford to release some habitual effort, Let's stay there for about two minutes. So again, as you stay in this position, noticing the areas that are mainly affected, noticing the areas that where this asana echoes the most, maybe lower back, Maybe it's your right upper thigh. Maybe it's your left shoulder. And then discovering some areas where the sensations are not so uh, obvious, but maybe where you hold some additional tension. As your attention travels through the areas of tension, notice how gradually this tension melts away encourage you to check your throat, your chest, your belly. This kind of the um, center line of the body. To sense where somatically do you most experience what is going on. You might also ask yourself, what am I believing right now? And yes, this is a cognitive question, but it can help you uh, come back to your body. So what am I believing? 
Am I believing uh, that things will never change? Am I believing that some things will never get better? And with whatever comes up, sense where this belief lives in your body. Keep coming back to your body. Maybe you can ask, where do I feel most vulnerable? Where is it in my body? And since no one can, no one can see you right now, if it feels safe, maybe you experiment right now by letting your face express what you're feeling. If you haven't done this before, uh, it can be a powerful way uh, to investigate and get more in contact with the truth of what is going on inside you. So let the expression of your face embody what you're experiencing in your heart, in your mind. Maybe your fist clenches. Maybe your jaw will get tight. So you're embodying that feeling. Since where in your body you're experiencing whatever you are most afraid of, most upset about. And explore that experience gently with care, with interest, with your heart or your throat or your belly. And you might find that touch helps to stay with it, breathe with it. So maybe you place uh, your free hand, your right hand at the heart center. You are opening to what is here. Maybe inviting whatever is that wants to be felt. Let's stay in our cattail twist for five more breaths. And whenever your fifth breath is fading away, let your right arm relax. Let your left hand relax. Release your right foot, release the strap. And very, very slowly, find your way onto your belly. Moving slowly, being very respectful of the low back, of the right shoulder, of the left shoulder. And once you land on your belly, bring your hands one on top of the other and rest your forehead on your hands. Maybe guide your hips side to side, side to side. Now some of us stay on the belly, some of us find child's pose for a couple of breaths. Please be kind to your lower back. And if you need some more of a relief for the lower spine, don't hesitate to find balas in the child's pose. If you choose to stay on your belly, windshield wiper your shins, guiding the knees side to side or your feet side to side. And if you are in child's pose, begin your journey onto your belly again. So let's all bring the feet, the tops of the feet to the floor and find your way onto your elbows, onto your forearms. Sphinx pose. This is just a transition to our next longer hold. But let's hover here for a few breaths. Engage your buttocks. Feel how that engagement echoes in your hip flexors and your lower back and then relax your buttocks. Now press your elbows down to lift your lower ribs slightly further away from the ground to lengthen the spine. 
and then sink into your shoulders. Not pressing down purposefully. Just a few more breaths here. Maybe move your chin side to side, side to side. Say some yeses with the chin. Maybe as you turn your chin to the left, you're seeing your left heel. And as you're turning your chin to the right, here is the right heel. Then come back to the neutral spine. And remember how in cattail twist position, your left shoulder was rotating out. So let's explore a different rotation, internal rotation of the shoulder. Press your right elbow down and lift your right elbow. And move your left arm underneath, underneath your neck, underneath your throat. So now your chin is pressing into your left upper arm. And if that doesn't feel comfortable, if you feel constricted in your breath, you can place a block or a, a pillow underneath your forehead. Now, if this is too much pressure on your left arm, left shoulder, you can roll over slightly more onto your left hand side and move your right knee out to the side so there's more support for the right side body. Now, if more pressure is invited, you can extend your right arm down on the floor along the side of the torso. And if you are exploring this option and the left shoulder mm, is okay with a little more pressure, left upper arm is agreeing with a little more pressure, take a peek. So here's another option for you. You can bend your left elbow bringing the left fingers towards the space between the shoulder blades and then bending the right elbow and snuggling up the right hand towards the space between the shoulder blades so now maybe your hands reach towards one another but honestly this asana does not have to be fancy <laughs> if you're feeling it you are doing it so at any point you can untie your arms just as long as there's some lengthening on your left outer arm. Now let's be generous with the breath. Let's continue breathing in to the belly, to the back of the body, to the lower back, to the chest, to the space between the shoulder blades. So the front and the back of the body are touched by the breath. So for the next couple of uh, moments, let's open and close the left hand. Let's do it 20 times. Open and close, open and close. So like this, with the left hand. Open and close, open and close for 20 times. And after you're done, just release your left hand and notice the sensations of tingling. Uh, there might be some coolness in the left hand, left worm. Stay in here for five more breaths. If you'd like to add even more pressure to your left arm, you can guide your left knee out to the side. Whenever your fifth breath is fading away, if you haven't already, lower your left leg down, lower your right leg down, bring your right hand to the floor in front of your left forearm, and slowly, slowly lift the chest, release your left arm from underneath you. And if it feels safe, circle your shoulders, one shoulder at a time, circling them backward a few times. And forward a few times, one shoulder at a time. Great. So let's switch sides in our little sequence. Roll over onto your left hand side. And I'm going to turn my face to you so you can see a little better. 
So bring your left elbow underneath your shoulder. And either use a block underneath your elbow or have your elbow on the floor. Extend your legs forward towards the short side of the mat. And either keep your knees extended or bend your knees as much as you need to. So wherever your elbow is on the floor or a prop, let's press the left elbow down to elevate the left side of the ribcage. As you inhale and as you exhale, sink into it. Couple more times, press down to lift up and then sink into it. One more time, inhale and exhale. So your head can stay lifted now or rest your head over the left shoulder. Right hand stays on the floor near your belly. Maybe bring your right hand to your thigh. Maybe wrap your arm around your lower back. Whatever you might, uh, whatever position of the arm you find most comfortable at the moment. So perhaps again you close your eyes and feel your lung, this time your left lung, um, pulsating and moving with the breath. Feeling the expansion of the left lung and the inhalation and its deflation on the exhalation. Again, maybe you inquire if in some way you feel vulnerable right now. And as you begin to touch the place where you feel vulnerable, you are beginning to come forward with the nurturing uh, part of the practice. So again and again, Maybe you ask this very important question. How does this part of me really want me to be with it? What is it uh, most need? Does it need to feel loved? Does it need to feel forgiven? Does it need to feel accepted? Does it need to feel safe? Does it need to trust your goodness? Trust the gold. And as you ask that question, listen. Listen for your most wise part of you. for what is needed here. You can begin the nurturing by offering from your own tender heart whatever is most needed to the vulnerable part within you. Couple more breaths here. Let's say five more. Whenever your fifth breath is fading away, very, very slowly press your left elbow, right hand down, lift the left side ribs further away from the ground. If you're practicing with the block, set the block aside, bend your knees, and re release all the way down to the floor and let your head be held by your left upper arm or a prop of some sort. Just allowing the body to melt into the ground. Oh, maybe celebrating the end of this hold with a deep breath in and a sigh of relief. Oh. 
and then bend your left elbow, bring your head onto your left hand, guide your right leg forward and your left knee back. Rotate your right shoulder out and search for your left foot with your right hand. If the foot is not available, find a strap. If you prefer not to hold on to anything, you can let your left leg go and wrap your arm around your lower back or open the arm out to the side, maybe to the floor, maybe to the bolster. Whichever position of the right arm you choose, turn your gaze to the ceiling and gently carry your head down to the ground or a prop behind your left upper arm. So when we ask this very important question, what does this experience need from me right now. Perhaps the habitual answer is, well, it needs to be pushed away or it needs to be masked. So these are the defenses. These are, this is the clay that we put over that vulnerability. But the practice of approaching this vulnerable spot mindfully with kindness really shows the pure gold of the nature of that experience. This is really a window to the very heart of who we are as human beings. So continue inquiring as you stay in this asana. Where, in what way am I feeling vulnerable right now? In what way is there um, a discomfort? And if you discover that vulnerability, what does this experience want? How does this experience want to be treated? And maybe as you stay with this experience, you might offer uh, some words to it. I'm sorry, or I love you, or I'm not leaving, or I care about the suffering. I am right here with you. So some words that directly offer comfort. Maybe you continue to offer that tenderness through touch. Maybe you bring your left hand over the heart center. Just for a few moments, we are here for five more breaths. I'm not leaving. You belong. I'm sorry. I love you. Whatever words this inner experience uh, needs at the moment. And whenever your fifth breath is fading away, if you're still holding onto your left foot or a strap, release that grip. Very, very slowly begin your journey onto your belly, being respectful of the lower back of your shoulders, finding the way onto the belly and bringing the forehead on your hands if you're Lower back needs more time to recover. Find child's pose. And after a few breaths in child's pose, return onto your belly. And let's move uh, back to sphinx position. 
This time, right away, press your hand down, left hand this time. Lift your left elbow and guide your right arm underneath your neck. Press your chin into your right upper arm. Maybe rest your forehead on a block. Maybe roll over more onto your right hand side and move your left knee out if you need less pressure on your right arm. If you need more pressure, lower your left arm down on the floor near your torso and maybe bend your elbows and search for your hands behind your back. And remember another way to increase the pressure on the right arm is to move the right knee out to the side. But again, in order to feel the sensations in the right arm, more than likely you don't need to be fancy and you, need, you don't need to add more complexity to this position. Again, remember, if you're feeling it, you're doing it. The breath is so generous. The inhalations touch the front and the back of the body. The exhalations are inviting the whole body to soften. Slowing the breathing down. Perhaps having your priority with quality of the breath over the quantity. Relaxing the buttocks, allowing the heels turn out to the sides if your legs are extended back. And maybe again, you uh, open and close your hand 20 times, right hand. Open and close, open and close, open and close. And then relax your right hand. Notice the aftertaste of that action of the hand. Stay in here for three more breaths. And so this time, let's not change the position of the right arm. Let's bend the knees and roll over onto your right hand side just for a moment. And then slowly, taking your time, begin to roll over onto your back. Really take your time with this transition. And as you find your way onto your back, extend your legs forward, arms over the head. Find a full body stretch and arch your back ever so slightly. Push your buttocks, push your tailbone down and lift your low back off the floor. Find another inhalation. And as you exhale, give your knees a hug, guide your brows to the knees, squeeze your thighs to the belly and release. If you have a bolster, place it underneath your knees or this afternoon, maybe you place the bolster over your pelvis, belly, and your lower ribs. I'm gonna smush the bolster into the body. This gentle pressure of the bolster might create very grounding effect on the nervous system. Let your arms rest on the floor by your sides. And if you feel a little chilly already, you might want to reach for a blanket or an extra piece of clothing. Just so in your Shavasana, you stay warm, supported, very cozy. Of course, if there's any other asana that your body needs before your relaxation, you're more than welcome to find it. If you already, uh, if you're already enjoying the stillness of Shavasana, perhaps you inquire, can I be five or 10% more comfortable in this position? 
So arranging the arms, legs, torso, head in a way where nothing is pulling onto your skin uncomfortably. Nothing is pressing into your bones uncomfortably. The body is being held. The body is being breathed. Noticing the presence of the practice in your body. And just noticing the quality, the quality of presence that is here. And just notice what has shifted. Whereas in the beginning of the practice, you might have felt like um, more of a reactive self. Maybe by the end of the practice, there is an increase in presence and compassion. So maybe this is the time where you can rest in your belonging to a vast space of loving presence. And as you rest, just listen to these words from the poet Rashani. There is a brokenness out of which comes the unbroken, a shatteredness out of which blooms the unshatterable. There is a sorrow beyond all grief which leads to joy and a fragility out of whose depths emerges strength. For the next couple of moments, rest. If you would like to stay in Shavasana for a longer time, you're welcome to pause this video. You're not going to disturb anyone. Thank you for joining us today. If it is time for you to wake up, begin to deepen your breath. 
as the breath deepens, start welcoming gentle movement. Your fingers, your toes, your face, your shoulders. Maybe you find a full body stretch. Maybe you find a deep yawn. Release your arms to the floor by your sides. And choose a side to roll onto, whichever side is calling you now. Pause there. And with the help of your arms, begin your journey to your upright seat. Take your time getting up. And when you find your tall spine, connect your hands at the heart. Just take a moment here to feel that touch, hand to hand, palm to palm. Feel your presence at that touch. Let's share one more breath together. Find a deep inhalation. Release. Thank you all for practicing together, for breathing together. Be well. Namaste.